let's get started here, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to do a, uh, a primering with this, show you kind of how it's done. Um, we're going to do the first step by mixing the paint inside of the cup, okay? Not my preferred method, but you can use it every once in a while. Um, and then we're going to primer this, and then we're going to go in and start actually doing the project, at least the start of the project, okay? And we're going to do mixing the paint the other way. In between, so we'll have to change this out. I'm going to show you the trick that I use for cleaning this. Not a trick, but how I do it. Okay, Because you'll find you know, cleaning this thing is actually pretty important. So the first thing I do, depending on how much you're doing, I probably need quite a bit of paint to actually cover this model all the way. Okay, So I'm going to come in with my uh, reducer. I'm going to put three drops, or four, let's say four, into the base of the cup. Put your reducer in first before the paint. Okay. We're going to be priming with uh, Army Color uh, Matte Black, which, again, Army Color, I'm not sure about the rest of their stuff, but their their uh, primer is absolutely fantastic. Um, probably about 10 drops. What's that? Five or six? What's that? About six? Six, seven, eight? Okay. Um, by the way, uh, another little piece you can use to have around is a junk brush. A uh, brush that's run out of life that really doesn't have a future anymore like this one right here. It's good for mixing stuff around in the cup. Um, so as you mix around, this is the, one of the reasons where I, I like to is like show you um, why I like to do it in the, the little um, cups that I showed you. The, um, I'm using a lot of ums here. It's very unlike me. But using the cups that tattoo artists use, as you can see, the paint kind of gets up on the side of the cup. And some people use that for judging how good the mixture is supposed to be. I don't particularly like it. Now again, we talked about what an airbrush is good for and what the different type of airbrushes are. Remember, this one right here, actually you don't really know, I said before, this is a high flow airbrush. Good for doing base coats, good for doing primary. So the paint doesn't need to be thinned down all that much to go on here. And this is not really thinned down all that much. Again, I still use the, uh, the reducer to put in here. But I haven't really checked the consistency, which a lot of people tell you, consistency of milk. It's kind of hard for me to judge unless I actually have milk next to me. I'm going to go over something to kind of help us with that. Okay? But again, all we're going to do is we're just going to primer this. You, can be, you don't have to primer with an airbrush. You can go outside in a normal spray can, spray paint this sucker right here, and then go on. Um, this will probably be voiced over because my compressor is loud enough for this not to make any sense when it goes on. Um, another thing, you see I have a black leather glove on. I'm not sure about you, but I can't stand it. All those other guys who are far better painters than I am get all kinds of crap all over their hand and their thumbs are perpetually covered with acrylic paint and all that kind of stuff. It's like, ah, good God, man, keep yourself neat. I recommended this for two reasons. Besides keeping your hands clean, again, your hands uh, have water in the form of sweat and salt on it and since you use acrylic paint, at least I use acrylic paint, it's water soluble which means your hands will actually dissolve the paint when you touch the model too much. So if you use this, you'll have a much better time of not wearing the model. Sometimes you want to mount this, sometimes you do not. When I'm base coating, I don't, when I'm using the airbrush, I actually like to handle it. Pick a pace where you can actually hold on to it and get going. For when you're airbrushing uh, and you're putting on a primer or base coat, you don't really need to be too terribly uh, concerned about things like uh, control. But as a basic, you want to get the flow started. Start pulling back until you start. See it? There it is. Okay, and you can see this thing. Aha! See that little mess right there? That's what happens when you pull back on the uh, lever and then press down instead of pressing down and then pulling back. You start the paint flow before the air, you get that splash, like that, okay? As they pull back, you see I get a little thing. And that's relatively fine right there, it's not so bad. Okay, but again, we're not doing that. Start off your model, come in, and you want to just hammer this thing with a whole bunch of paint. Okay, again, we're primer, so here we go. I'm not too worried about starting off the model particularly because, again, this is just going to be black. It's going to be primer. Now, I'm sure my hands are going to get in the way at least a little bit during the time, and I will do my best. But you guys know how to primer, right? I mean, I'm sure you can figure that out. It's not like a big deal. Just make sure you get everywhere. You have no excuse. 
Get everywhere that you possibly can. Every once in a while, look in the cup to see how much you have left, because sometimes, at least myself, I don't want, you can't really do small amounts when you're airbrushing. You can only really kind of do a bit, because only so much will fit in, uh, in the reservoir, and that's really how much there needs to be in order for you to be able to do this. If there's like one drop, I don't think there's an airbrush out there that could do one drop of paint. So you want to make sure that you uh, don't run out of paint if you're actually, you know, doing a base coat. Because, you, you know, if you get like 90% there and you only have like one little thing to do, well, you might as well do it with a brush. Because going in with one drop, you're going to have to make lots of uh, paint to actually finish up. Anyway. So I'm just doing this. Now this thing is a little bit dirty and I'm going to show you how to clean it here in a second. Uh, which is a very important part. You can see how, well probably not, but the flow is now, you can kind of almost hear the flow. It doesn't sound very healthy. And it's not because it's dirty. Anyway. Okay, so that's pretty much primer, okay? Good thing about an airbrush is you could push down without letting the paint go, right? And you could use the airflow to dry the model. And it's usually dry immediately. That is a nice little benefit because you don't have to wait like, you know, an hour, hour and a half for this thing to dry and go in the paint. If you're really raring to go, there you go. Now, I have paint left in here and I didn't use it all, okay? I need to clean the thing. And cleaning it's a very, very important part of having an airbrush, okay? Um, what you want to do is you're going to want to get all that paint out of there. Now, some people just take water like I have right here, and they're going to shove it in there, and they're going to kind of try and run it through as many times as possible until it goes clean. And essentially, that's really what you need to do. However, it's going to take you forever and a day, believe you me. If you have this much paint in here still, and you're going to try and flush it all out with water, there's a different way to go that I found really helps me, and really works for me. Okay, so I'm going to take my, my wipe off rag, which is getting quite dirty, and I have this junky brush here. This looks like hell, and there's a good reason for it. You're going to find out why here in a second. Okay, this is my airbrush rag. Um, you want it to be kind of rough. You don't want it to be real smooth. You don't wipe your brushes on this thing. This is purely for airbrushing, so it can be kind of like a dish towel or a rag that you use for washing dishes. Okay. Instead of getting all this stuff out, so I'm trying to get it out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some water. I'm going to forcefully spray it in there, and I'm just going to dump it out. This gets the vast majority of paint out of the airbrush up front. And then you stick this in, and you're going to clean your uh, your pot, right? And a lot of this probably doesn't look like much. And it's much easier to see, obviously, when you're doing it yourself. But you're going to go on your finger in there, and you're going to scrape all that crap out, right? And then you're going to start spraying water. Now, this is where you want to use your, um, your airbrush pot, the thing that I showed you before, which is this right here, right? That thing. Okay, that was brilliant. This is where you want to use this. Now, I'm going to do it outside of that to kind of show you what I'm doing. Okay, so just remember this is all done inside the pot. So, what you do once you get most of it out, okay, is you put some water in, okay, and you basically squirt water in, pour it out, squirt water, pour it out until the water, as you can see in here, even though the side's dirty, doesn't um, look like there's paint, you know mixed in with it anymore. The water looks clean, you know, as when you put it in. Um, wash this out a little bit more, otherwise you're not going to be able to see. And especially primers, by the way, why I use primers on this brush, tend to stick pretty heavily to the inside of your cup. Having a removable cup, like my Awada does, will prevent this. Anyway, so and you're going to stick it inside of your brush uh, pot, okay, I clean, and then you're going to start spraying it out just like that inside. You may have to do a full cup, like fill this thing all the way up with water and spray it. What you want to do is when you take it away, spray your rag, 
And when your rag doesn't turn black anymore because, or whatever color you had in it, then you're ready to go for the next color. This is a, just a normal, general cleaning. Okay? And that right there, guys, is how you clean your airbrush. Now, when you really clean it, clean it, basically you take it all the way apart, clean all the pieces individually, um, put it back together, and, sh you know, shove it back together. Sometimes you can let put some assemble green in here, let it soak for a few minutes, and then spray that out inside of your cleaning pot. Um, I, I'm not going through deep cleaning right now. I'm just going through basic cleaning. Okay? Don't need this anymore. I got a little messiness right here. And anyway, the point is, even though you can't really see that because I have a black glove on, but our, our figure here is primer. All right? So now we're going to start going in. And we're going to use a different airbrush. Again, if you only have one, it doesn't matter. We'll start showing you the technique of actually getting this guy um, uh, base coated and doing some airbrush work on him. Okay? So stay tuned, and I'm going to teach you how to mix your paints. Mm -hmm.